Socially, in the Chinese culture, elders are extremely important. Elders are respected by those in their community and their families. In terms of physical contact, hand holding in public is often seen, but contact in general is limited between men and women. Officially, China is an atheist country. However, some parts of the population practice traditional religions such as Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. Those who follow the teachings of Confucius stress a responsibility to community and obedience to elders. Those who follow the teachings of Tao focus on ideals of balance and order. And those who follow the teachings of Buddha reject material goods and strive to reach nirvana, which is being above our body and mind. Much like American New Year, the people of China celebrate Chinese New Year. It is a time for a fresh start and is marked by gift giving, family, and friends. Feng Shui is a traditional Chinese art in which the primary purpose is to make sure energy flows through the space. The Chinese believe that free circulation of energy without interruptions allows for a healthy life. Before being built, many homes and businesses must be inspected as being in accordance with the Feng Shui philosophy. Generally, the Chinese diet focuses on two main components. The first component is the main food dish, which consists of a rice if you are in South China, or a more wheat-based product such as noodles, or a steamed bun if you are in North China. The second component is referred to as the vegetable, which can include vegetables, fish, meat, or other items. Hot water or tea is preferred to cold water as it is considered more beneficial for digestion. Researchers believe that the Chinese diet could be a leading cause of the lower incidence of cancer, heart disease, and obesity in this population. Many foods are associated with being either yin or yang and may be consumed or avoided in an effort to maintain the balance of these opposing energies. There are many Western gestures we use that may be rude or derogatory in China. For example, pointing with an index finger should be avoided, an open hand gesture is preferred. Similarly, using a finger to beckon someone is rude and signal instead with the palm downward using a waving motion. Whistling is considered rude as is showing the soles of your shoes. Shrugging shoulders, winking, and the okay signs are Western gestures that are confusing to the Chinese people. The Chinese have difficulty saying no outright, favoring more discreet terms such as maybe or we'll see. Traditional Chinese medicine is the large healing system that is used in Chinese culture. There are four pillars to TCM, which are Qigong, acupuncture, massage, and herbal medicine. Qigong focuses on physical healing with exercise. It is used to increase qi to specific organs to help cure illness, as well as maintain and enhance health. If qi circulation is kept in balance, it is thought to be effective in preventing illness as well as extending the lifespan. Herbal use is another pillar of TCM. Herbs are used to restore balance to the opposing forces of energy called the yin and yang. When yin and yang are unbalanced in the body, this causes a blockage of qi, resulting in illness. Chinese herbs are used to treat illnesses such as digestive, liver, and cardiovascular problems, as well as stress and fatigue. Acupuncture is one of the oldest but still common healing systems in the world. TCM believe that there are 2,000 acupuncture points which are connected by 20 pathways called meridians. These meridians conduct energy between the surface of the body and its internal organs. Acupuncture is believed to keep yin and yang in balance by correcting qi energy flow in the body. In TCM, massage normally accompanies qigong. Massage is thought to enhance the flow of blood, energy, and bodily fluids from the outside while Qigong does this from the inside, massage accelerates the ability to captivate energy from the body. China has a subtropical climate and the temperatures can reach extremes in summer and winter. Spring and autumn are very pleasant periods in almost all the regions. There is a rapid industrialization and population growth which has caused environmental issues in China. Beijing has big industry and heats with coal which causes the air to have extreme high levels of pollution in winter months. There are some similarities in health problems between China and the United States. Smoking is a huge problem in China. It claims about 1.2 million lives a year, and the tobacco industry is a $100 billion business. Going along with that, smog is a huge problem, especially in big cities. China's culture is conservative, and a lack of sex education is giving other health problems. There is a lack of knowledge of contraception, and the results are climbing numbers of abortions in young women. In the past, China was concerned that it had too many children to support, so the government put in the one-child policy. The country had great success with this, but now in turn faces a problem of having too few of children to support a rapidly aging population. In 2010, 13% of the Chinese Americans were uninsured. 
However, a lack of insurance is not the only issue Chinese Americans have faced in gaining access to health care in the United States. Barriers to the U.S. health system include lack of language and culturally competent services, geographic and economic barriers. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health reports that 46% of Chinese are not fluent in English. This poses a problem for us as healthcare providers because if we can't communicate with them effectively, how can we provide them with the best care possible? But there is good news. Access to health care for Chinese Americans has markedly increased with the enforcement of the Affordable Health Care Act. Now Chinese Americans will have access to coverage needed to seek medical intervention such as physical therapy. It also protects the patient's choice of doctor, meaning our Chinese patients will have the freedom to choose a provider within their network without a referral. It will increase access to community health centers in underserved areas, alleviating the geographic and economic barriers. With the changes in healthcare on the rise, it's helpful to keep in mind if we are culturally competent and make our patients feel comfortable, they now have the ability to choose us. A community that seldom obtained medical interventions in past years is beginning to gain access, and what a difference we can make in their lives by understanding their culture a little bit better.